So I'm currently working on a video titled Everything Known About Ashes of Creation, which is going to be an hour and a half long video or longer. I'm going to have that script linked in the description. If you guys get a chance to read through it, it's a long script, but I'd like some people to look at it, especially the more knowledgeable people about Ashes of Creation, and just make sure that I didn't get anything wrong because it's much easier to fix those things now than after I start actually producing the video. However, I don't think I got anything wrong because I heavily referenced the wiki and I've read through the wiki myself probably 10 times <laughs> and I've made 100 videos about Ashes of Creation, so I don't think there's probably too much wrong in there, but I'd still like for some people to just double check it if you get the chance. During the process of making that script, I came up with a video idea, and that is the top things you may not know about Ashes of Creation. I tried to narrow it down to five, I couldn't do that. Tried to narrow it down to 10, couldn't do that. Ended up narrowing it down to 15 items. Ashes of Creation is an incredibly ambitious project, as you guys know. And when you go down that wiki rabbit hole, the layers upon layers of complexity continue to unravel the deeper you go into that wiki. It is so complex and ambitious that my opinion is some of these features won't even make it into the launch of the game and maybe are added later in future expansions or patches. But with that being said, let's get started with the first one, Mount Barding. You might have heard that Ashes is planned to have a very complex mount system, but you might not have heard that you have to put armor attachments on your mounts that increase the stats and change the appearance of your mount if the mount has barding slots available. Next, we have the Affiliation Tree. This is the hierarchy of determining how wars will function. The interesting thing here is that node citizenship is the highest form of membership, and if two nodes are at war, that could even put guild members against each other in that war. Up next is something that affects gatherers, and that is the land management system. The health of the land can be increased or decreased based on player activity. If a specific resource is over farmed in an area, that might reduce the spawn rate of that resource in that area. If an invasive species is dealt with in an area, that might increase the health of the land. Next we have the road system of Vera. Roads are both pre-generated and player influenced. The largest roads are referred to as arteries. As nodes advance, smaller roads, referred to as veins, connect the arteries to the nodes. Roads upgrade as nodes advance and caravan speeds will change when used on the more advanced roads. As nodes advance even higher, capillary roads will form and connect to various points of interest surrounding the node. Seasons and weather could affect access to various roads as well. The next thing you might not be aware of is node policies and node happiness. Node policies can be unlocked based on various activities within a node. The mayor is then able to slot these policies in the available policy slots and the citizens can vote to approve of these policies. Node happiness will increase the amount of policies that are available. Next we have population based scaling of NPC sold items. This is an attempt to control inflation on a server by varying prices of NPC sold items based on the economic activity on a server. Next we have skill points and specific specifically the way in which players can allocate skill points. Players receive skill points as they level and they can choose to spend these to either unlock a lot of skills but not allocate a lot of skill points to them or they can unlock few skills but allocate a lot of skill points to them or some variation in between those two extremes. Next we have dungeon bosses and raids will adapt based on the performance of the raid or the group against previous bosses in that encounter. Higher performance against previous bosses bosses in a dungeon will cause subsequent bosses to be stronger and have better loot tables. Next we have castle taxes. You might know that taxation is a part of Ashes of Creation and nodes and castles will collect taxes from the citizens under their control. You might not know that each castle controls one fifth of the world map as there are only five castles compared to 85 nodes so the castles will have a huge tax base they pull from. And this is the only form of taxation that the controlling players will be able to use a portion of these collected taxes for whatever they would like versus nodes where the taxes are only usable within the node system and not externally. This is sneakily one of the biggest reasons why a guild would want to own a castle and a lot of people are not aware of this. Next we have the castle siege scroll deployment process. You might be aware that guilds will have to go through a process to declare a castle siege but you 
might not be aware of the details surrounding this process. Guilds will need to register for the siege, and then they will be given a siege scroll creation quest that they will need to complete. Once the quest is completed, they will have an opportunity to lay down the siege declaration scroll, and the first guild to successfully do so will be the one chosen to siege the castle. However, siege scroll deployment is a 5 minute cast time that must be done by the guild leader and can only be interrupted by killing the guild leader. The quality of the scroll determines how close to the castle the cast will need to be performed. And as soon as the 5 minute timer starts, the region is notified. So this presents an interesting situation where PvP could occur to prevent a guild from successfully deploying their scroll, at least in time for another guild to finish their own cast. Another little talked about mechanic of Ashes of Creation is the Siege Summons abilities that are usable during sieges. Up to 8 players of the same primary archetype can band together to create monumental effects during a siege. Players will need to be in the same group or raid to perform these summons. A few examples given are summoners creating a large siege golem. This is actually the party leader themselves transforming into this powerful golem. The more players that contribute to the summon, the larger the golem will be. Another example is tanks all casting their summon wall abilities and thereby constructing a much larger wall. This would require the enemy team damaging the wall to break through it. Another little talked about feature is that players will have a lifetime PK value score. This will work with the corruption system to increase a player's corruption score faster if they have a high PK value score. So there are long term effects to bad behavior in open world PvP via the corruption system. Next we have combat pets. These are not archetype specific pets or summons, instead they are available to all archetypes. These pets will not increase a player's power, instead they will provide horizontal progression for the player and another way to modify their player playstyle. These pets can be tamed from certain creatures in the world. The pets will adhere to a simple trinity structure, so you will have tank healer and DPS pets available. And there will be different rarities of these pets as well. Moving on to the number two little talked about feature of Ashes of Creation, and that is the world manager algorithm. This algorithm will affect many different systems in Ashes of Creation. First, it will affect how a node's zone of influence will expand. The world manager Manager algorithm has a heat map of activity on a server and determines how a node advances as well as how the zone of influence of a node will change based on node advancement. So this heat map is combined with the activity and level of neighboring nodes and the nearest coast to determine how a node's zone of influence might expand when a node levels up. So the zone of influence of a node is not a static increase in size. Instead, if a lot of players are active in one area of a node's ZOI, ZOI might expand and in that direction depending on the other factors mentioned. The world manager algorithm will also monitor the transit of goods and resources between regions to drive quest rewards in specific areas. So if a specific resource is scarce then quest rewards might adjust to help alleviate some of that scarcity. The final thing the world manager algorithm will handle and also the number one little known thing about Ashes of Creation is the hunting certificate system. Now you might have heard about the hunting certificates, but you might not know all the details of it. Hunting certificates are a very different take on gold generation from mob kills. Instead of mobs dropping gold directly, they will instead drop certificates that can be turned in at hunter NPCs in nodes. These certificates are items such as a wolf dropping a pelt, not a piece of paper, and each of these certificates can only be found at its specific economic region. For example, economic region 1 might have gray wolf pelts, economic region 2 might have red wolf pelts. These are the only areas that you can find that type of pelt. The certificates do not have the same value at every hunter NPC. The value of these certificates has a lot of factors that affect their price. I really feel like the system is not well understood and I think it runs much deeper than a lot of people think. If you want the full rundown of hunting certificates in Ashes of Creation, check out the video linked in the card above and in the description where I go very 
very in-depth on hunting certificates. And that's the top 15 things you may not know about Ashes of Creation. Let me know if there's anything in this video that you were unaware of, and if there's something you felt should have been in the video. And if you get some time, check out that script and let me know if there's anything that should be changed or is missing. And if you like the video, consider subscribing. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.